Hi, here's a quick video on Git subtrees. I made this video because I couldn't find all of this information in one place. I read several articles, looked at uh, some Git GUI clients that support subtrees to some degree, uh, ran into a lot of problems, and anyway, so here's what I've learned. <laughs> Uh, so why do we use Git subtrees? Briefly, if you're looking at this, you probably already know, but we want to share a repository between different projects. So, for instance, like a library, um, and we want to share it as a what's called a subtree, but you can also think of it as sort of a sub repository. So, uh, and I thought a mind map would be sort of the easiest way to explain a few of these concepts. But so at a high level, here's what we're going to be doing: we're going to add an external rep repository as a subtree to our current sort of we'll call it a parent repository uh, we're going to learn how to pull changes new changes that are made to that external repository into our subtree uh, we can make changes in the parent repository and push those back, and then we can also even switch between branches of the subtree it's, these things are not necessarily super obvious uh, another thing that I'm not going to do here is we can actually split out an existing repository into a subtree. But I'm not going to cover that right now. Uh, so anyway, here's the commands we're going to use. And we're going to kind of walk through these and see what they look like. So this represents our parent repository. And this is something we're calling my lib. So this is something that would be shared between multiple repositories. We're going to show how to add this as a subrepository and interact with it. All right, so the first command we generally want, and it looks like subtree works, get subtree commands work a little better if we add a remote to our, to our external repository that we're calling mylib. So just sort of a standard get remote add command. In the syntax of subtree, you can always explicitly specify the entire URL, but I did see some mentions on Stack Overflow where that was not always working. And I believe it because there's some other weird things going on I'll show you in a minute. But generally it seems to work pretty well if you just follow the right steps. <laughs> uh, all right, so git add subtree. So this is, this, is, this, is, this is the one we want here. So what this is going to do, when we execute this from the parent repo directory, it's actually going to make the parent repository look like this. And from there, a, a link is made, like Git knows that this is now a sub-repository and sort of how to interact with it. But we want to also commit those changes because what it, what this does is it pulls it pulls down these files from the sub repository creates this directory which is the prefix uh, oh and you also want to do a dash dash which squashes the commits otherwise you'll get the whole commit history of the sub repository which you generally don't want but um, you know whatever and okay from there what we can do is we can make changes. So for instance, say we add another file here, let's call it live etext, and we add and commit this to our parent repository, and then we execute this command, it will in fact put push this file up to uh, you know, say this is this, say this is bitbucket, um, it'll push this file up to bitbucket, and then if you want to you know, grab that locally, you would have to pull it CD to this directory and um, this repository and do a pull. But that's that's it. So it's pretty easy to interact. And of course, this works for other things. Uh, you know, if we were to update these files or remove them, then we can push. And finally, if we're, if somebody else is working on this repository or we're working on it and we add and commit a file here and push it up to Bitbucket. And then we want to pull those changes. We execute the git subtree pull, and that would add that file here. All right. So now, what if we actually want to say this branch, I probably should have done this, but say this branch is master. 
just for consistency, I'll say we're on the master branch here. And say that we want to we want to switch this to a different branch. Say we want to switch this to a branch that was tag release 1.0 or something like that. Maybe 1.5. It's a little more realistic. Well, from here, the commands we would execute is that we would go, in, go into the master repository and we would say git rm my lib repo. I'll just kind of separate this. And from there, we would say git commit. And then we would add this back, but we would specify the branch that we want, which in this case would be release 1.5. And of course, this assumes that there's a 1.5 branch down here on uh, my lib repo. All right, so what are the gotchas? This is a big one I learned. So in a lot of the documentation, it will say that you specify your prefix right here, like this, as sort of a, a more explicit path, dot slash. Turns out that causes everything to fail. <laughs> and it fails in multiple places, and I saw lots of people complaining about this. So hopefully this is a bug that will be fixed at some point in the future, but do not prepend things with dot slash. What's the What's the other strangeness? Well, you would think that once you have your sub repo set up, Git should sort of know where it is. And from there, if you say git subtree pull, it would actually pull the files to the correct location. Turns out this is not right. You need to be in the correct directory when you execute the subtree pull command. So, for instance, if you want to pull these files down, you need to be in this directory, even though you're specifying the prefix. Otherwise, this should be my lib, I guess. Otherwise, what happens is you end up with all these files up here. And that's happened to me a few times, which I know is strange, but that's the reason. When you do the pull, you actually need to be down in the subdirectory. It doesn't even seem maybe to care about what you specify as the prefix. So those are pretty important. All right, so now let's look at some real examples and going through those commands. So here we have our parent repository, just has a couple files, our child repository, and then over here on the right, we have source tree set up uh, looking at those repositories and Bitbucket so we can kind of interact with them in both places. All right, so the first thing we want to do is add a remote to our parent repository. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we have added our a remote pointing at this child repository. And now let's go ahead and add it as a subtree. All right, so there we executed the git subtree add command and the prefix tells it what directory it's uh, it's going to live in. And again, if you say dot slash in front of my lib in the prefix, even though the documentation says it, it will fail. I should probably show the failure, but I don't know, it kind of makes a mess. So anyway, now we have our my lib directory. And if we look at that, uh, it contains the files that we want. However, if we look at git status, oh, okay, I guess those have been added. So yeah, if we if we look at the log now, we have this this commit. Let's go over here and look at what I think is a little bit easier way to view the repository, just because I'm used to it. Um, so what happened was when we added that subtree, it created this merge commit. Uh, so this is where we're at now with master. So it creates, it creates the merge commit and commits it both. So now let's go ahead and make a change to a file down here. 
or let's go ahead and create our new file and we actually do have to add this we want to add this So we've added the file and we can see it here. Let's see. Yep. All right. Very good. Uh, and now let's go ahead and pull this. Oh, we have to push. We have to do a couple things. <laughs> we want to push our new file up to the up to the parent repository in Bitbucket. Now, even though we push that, it's still it still doesn't yet exist in the child repository down here. So I could say git pull. And there's nothing to pull. It's already up to date. Uh, so now what we want to do is push the subtree. And to do that, we say git subtree push. And I had the wrong syntax there. So we're going to say we, we actually called our remote my lab. So we're going to push this to the master branch of the sub repository. There we have it. Now, if we go down here, this is what things look like. But if we do a git pull, Oops, I guess it wants git pull origin master. I, I deleted the remotes and re-added them when I was setting this up. So um, anyway, here is our file that we've pulled down that we added from the parent repository. So that was good. And now if we, let's go ahead and add another file down here. So we've added that file to the We've and made a commit to our local repository. Now let's go ahead and push that up to the bucket. So let's just take a look over here and see what things now look like. Um, so we've added this file lib.f and we've pushed it up to origin, the origin. So everything is synced there. And now we're going to pull it down over here. And in fact, rather than type in the command, uh, actually, that's not true. Now we need to <laughs> we need to pull it over here. All right, and so when we execute that command, it's going to create a merge commit and ask us to comment on it. Pulling in updates from subtree, which we don't really have to do, but there we have it. Now, if we let's go ahead and look at source, what source tree is telling us. So we've pulled in the file that we created outside our repository into our parent repository here. We also pulled in this the history. Oops. We also pulled in the history of. Since I didn't do a squash, <laughs> it looks like we pulled in the, uh, the history from our sub repository, which is fine. So that is pretty much it. Interacting with subtrees. The one last thing I, I'll demonstrate is how to switch branches. So this will take me just a minute to set up. Um, actually, let's go ahead and leverage source tree here. So Let's say we have a branch called first commit. Or let's call this version 1.0. I'm not sure if a tag would work. Whoops. I wanted that to be here. All right. Let me check that out and reset it down here. Source tree makes easy. All right, so now we have this version 1.0 branch, which could probably be a tag, pointing at our first commit. Let's go ahead and push that up so that Bitbucket knows about it. And now we're essentially going to switch to this branch. 
in our parent repository, which will only have these two files. So we're going to go over here and look at my lab, and we have all these files, but we're going to get it just back to uh, this other original branch. How do we do this? What we have to do is actually remove my lab. Oh, with a dash R, I guess. There we go. Commit that. Switching subtree branches. All right. So now we're back to this state, and essentially we're just going to grab that directory again. Let's see if I can grab our correct add command, which was this one here. But instead of master, we're going to say version 1.0. Now we have our my live directory again, but if we look at what's in it, it'll be just those two files. So we have indeed switched back to this branch. All right, so that has been everything I've learned about Git subtrees. I hope you found this helpful and happy subtreeing.